Hi, this is Dr. Price with a mini lesson on introduction to motion terminology. Physics, of course, is all about the study of motion. And if you're going to study motion, the first thing we need to do is establish a vocabulary because in physics, lots of uh, terms are familiar from everyday language, but they might have a slightly different or more specific meaning in physics than they do in everyday language. So the first thing we need to do is talk about what some of that vocabulary is. Uh, one of the terms, of course, is if you're going to move, then it helps, it helps to know uh, where you started. So uh, we use the term position uh, to mean pretty much the same thing that we mean in everyday language. That's your location. But usually when we're talking about position in uh, physics, we need to be specific. So you probably would give some kind of coordinate or coordinates for your position. You wouldn't just say, I'm over by the tree. You would want to uh, be more specific with numbers. Okay, So position in physics means the uh, coordinates that are uh, giving our location. Then you also have uh, what happens if you change position. So let's say we start right here and we move over here somewhere. Then our initial position we might call uh, x1, and after we move, we might call that position x2. The straight line distance between those two points is the difference in our original position and our final position. We call that displacement. Okay, displacement is the change in position. Uh, we could use symbols to write displacement as delta x, the capital delta symbol, that uh, triangle. Uh, usually is used to mean change in. So if you see delta x, that means displacement or change in position. And the equation for that would be your final location, x2 minus your initial location. Okay, now there's an important a uh, term that's related to displacement, but it's not the same thing, and that is the distance that you travel to get from x1 to x2. Okay, so I may or may not have gone straight there. I may have taken some curved path, right? If I'm driving in eastern Kentucky, probably I did not drive straight from x1 to x2. I probably went around some curvy roads. Right, and uh, that means that the total distance that I traveled is going to be different than my displacement, unless I went straight there. Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, we'll call that the path length. Uh, that is... Uh, the total distance that you traveled. Uh, as you were going from X1 to X2. Okay, in other words, uh, if you went straight there as the crow flies, then your distance and your displacement would be the same. But otherwise, your displacement and your path length would be different. 
the path length uh, is the same thing if you had an odometer in your car then the odometer is reading your path length So let me give you a little question to see if you've got this down. Okay, we'll have, uh, let's say we have a running track. That's kind of an oval. Uh, that's not a very good oval, but uh, good enough. So what, what we'll do is, let's say we have a runner who starts right here at the start line. Let's say that this track is a quarter of a mile round. And we have a runner that's going to make two laps, two complete laps, okay? And after the runner makes those two complete laps, I'm going to ask you two different questions. One is, um, what is the runner's displacement? And two, what is the runner's path length. What I just recommend you do for a moment is pause this recording, think about those two answers, uh, and when you think you've come up with an answer, then unpause the recording and I'll tell you what the solution is. Okay, the first question, what is the runner's displacement? Well, the displacement is the distance between your starting point and your ending point. The runner started at the start line, made two complete laps, and ended up right back where they started. Okay, so there is no difference between the starting point and the ending point. The runner's displacement is zero. On the other hand, the path length is the total distance that you traveled while you were going from point A to point B. So if the, uh, if the runner was carrying a pedometer or something and that uh, measured the total distance traveled, then the runner would go a quarter of a mile in the first lap and then another quarter of a mile on the second lap, that would be half a mile. So the answer to part two is half a mile. That's the end of this mini lesson on displacement and path length.